Welcome to the T-Bird Zone, seen every week on suutbirds.com and suunews.com. We're in studio today with head football coach Ed Lamb. And we're going to be talking about the recap of the South Dakota State game. And coach, we talked about last week that the key matchup would be the offensive line, that battle of the trenches. Um, how did you see that play out? Scale of one to ten, where would you grade that? Ten being superior. I thought our defensive line held tough. Our defense was on the field a lot, um, especially in the third quarter with a couple of turnovers we had on defense and then on offense. Excuse me, and then also. I made a poor decision to go for it on fourth down in our own territory, and that put our defense back out on the field. So with the exception of a stretch there in the third quarter, I thought our defensive line held up really well. Um, you talked about uh, that third quarter. It seemed, looking stat-wise, first, second, third quarter, South Dakota State was able to do what they wanted. But fourth quarter, it seemed like the defense really was able to put the clamp down. Um, is that a, a reflection of the conditioning? of the team and how I know your approach is you want to have the best conditioned team on the field. Did, was that really just the fruits of, of those labors? Uh, well, certainly our the way that our players work, that's second to none, their work ethic. And so that's always going to be an advantage for us down the stretch. To, to characterize the comeback as, as solely based on conditioning probably isn't fair to South Dakota State or our guys. Our guys executed better. I thought our coaches made some adjustments and the players uh, execute the, executed those adjustments down the stretch. And I think all those things together created the impact in the fourth quarter. Let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the running game. Um, I don't think the team had the success that it was hoping for in the running game. Um, was that well, and then the team, then Brad threw the ball a lot. Um, was that, was throwing the ball a lot by design, or was that because the, the running game just wasn't clicking as well as you would have hoped? Our philosophy has always been, and, and will continue to be, take what the defense gives us. And the defense was bringing a lot of pressure. Typically, that's difficult for our style of offense to run the ball consistently into pressure. And so we, we did, uh, as the game progressed, we ran a little bit er early. I think we had, uh, we're about 50-50 balance maybe on the first couple of series. And then, and then we tried the passing game and, and that seemed to work well. We got a score, we went up. And I think things were, were fairly balanced until, like I said, on, in the third quarter when the tide turned and South Dakota State took the momentum and got the big lead, then we needed to go to the pass. So I think throw out all the stats from the third quarter on in terms of balance, run to pass, and it's probably a fair assessment in terms of what our game plan was to look at the first couple of quarters. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, end of the game. Um, uh, Southern Utah had scored. Um, they kicked the PAT. Game's tied. Go for two. We ultimately win that ball game. Mm -hmm. um, the decision was go for two. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the thoughts on the sideline going into that play. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the, the thoughts on the sideline are, are simply that um, it's, it's go for two or it's go for one. And um, a, a lot of times, and I think early in, early in my career, it was, it was like, or as a casual fan, I've always thought you go for the win or you go for the tie or you take the tie. You go for the win or you go for overtime. And that's really not what it is. And, and a couple of years ago at Cal Poly, we were in a very similar situation. And, uh, and I learned that firsthand. We, we elected to go for two. The opponent called timeout. I changed my mind. We went for one, thinking, okay, we'll take overtime. Well, we didn't take overtime. We missed a PAT. And so that was a lesson learned for me in that, in that a, a PAT is not an automatic. Neither is a two-point conversion. I felt like we had all the momentum. I felt like we had a good play that would get open. It did get open. Their defender made a great diving play on Daryl Brown and, and grabbed his, his right arm as he was getting ready to make the catch. So if things would have worked out a little differently, we could have had a walk-off victory, and, uh, and it didn't. And that's, I think, our, our players, our staff, everybody in our program is comfortable with how the game ended. We just didn't take care of business when the game was going on. Um, should the, the opportunity present itself again, go for two in that same situation? Well, no, um, not necessarily. I think it's all about the situation. Okay. And, and the situation is not go for two or play for overtime. The situation is, are we at home? Are we on the road? Do we have the momentum? Did we come from behind? Or are they rolling back with the momentum against us? And, and all those things come into play. So I, I couldn't predict with any certainty. And those decisions are so much easier when you're sitting here and thinking back on the game. And well, uh, fans on the couch <laughs> always have the better yeah, play I, call. Yeah, I, I appreciate sure. that. But, but actually, uh, it, it might be easier then when, when we're 
when we're not successful, it's easier now to think of all the circumstances. And obviously, if somebody were to say, "Could you? Would you take that decision again?" Well, yes. If if the outcome would be uncertain again, sure. and I could go back in time, of course, <laughs> I would. I would make the decision again and make it differently. But you know, at that time, uh, there was no question in anybody's mind. I think it would have been a real disappointment for our players if I would have said, "Hey, guys, we're going to go for one and play for overtime." Well, and, and like you had said, I mean, it seemed like the fourth quarter, Southern Utah had all the momentum in the world. Um, even those casual Madden gamers, I'm sure they go for two, yeah. even in that situation with the offensive rolling. We had completed our last six passes at the point where we scored the touchdown, so okay. seven in a row was not out of the question. Let's talk about turnovers, because um, those played a, a huge part um, in the game. Uh, Brad Sorensen threw for three interceptions, gave, allowed three interceptions, one apparently in and out of the hands of the receiver. Um, but our defense also very opportunistic in running a, an interception back uh, for a touchdown. They pick up a fumble that ultimately leads to, leads to a touchdown. Uh, talk about the, the turnover battle in that game. The turnover ratio was one of the keys to the game going into the game. Every Tuesday I give our team a few keys to the game, and that was one of the keys to the game was, uh, was the turnover ratio. We needed to be on top of that. And at first glance, it would seem like we were three and three on the turnover ratio. We took three away from them, and they took three away from us. But really, we had four turnovers. And as I alluded to, one of those was on downs, and it was at a, a critical point in the game. And um, and that was on me. That was my decision, and, and we failed. Um, talk about the interception return uh, quickly. Uh, Aaron Vonner, a lot of juking and jiving. But mm -hmm. you had talked about when we had talked previously there were a lot of good blocks on the defensive side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a great adjustment by the defensive staff and by Aaron Vonner executing it, which is not easy in the heat of battle to, to change up a defensive scheme. He jumped the pass, he read it well, he stepped in front of the uh, intended receiver, broke the receiver's tackle because the receiver saw the interception coming, and then he continued to scoot down the field and make a few cuts. And, and Jeff Tukawafu and Blake Fenn were out in front blocking and planted one of the uh, Sacramento uh, Excuse me, I'm already South on the next Dakota game. State. South we'll Dakota talk about State that soon. players in the end zone, and, and Aaron followed a convo convoy of really hardworking guys. Blake, uh, like I said, Blake Fenn, Jeff Tukawafu, uh, Chad Hansen, all those guys and more were out front leading him. Well, we appreciate you watching here on, on the T Bird Zone, stream live on sutbirds.com and sunews.com. Stay tuned for more. We'll have a preview of Sacramento State. Again, always online, sutbirds.com and sunews.com.